Hey, 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 YouTubers. Uh, it's Uncle Lo. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, going to try a, a bit of a different perspective than uh, a recording. Um, I'm super excited what I have uh, kind of to share with you today. Um, it just talks a little bit about kind of the, the journey I've been uh, going through and just the initial steps of, um, you know, what I had to go through that personally to even understand uh, where to start in kind of unpacking my mind uh, or even even understanding, uh, you know, what kind of traumas, uh, you know, I, I had experienced or experiencing that, uh, you know, put me into depressionary or uh, anxiety uh, states. And uh, I wanted to actually share, uh, and I just took a few notes, so I apologize for my uh, looking down and up uh, at the same time, is um, I really want to take away a few things, was just understanding what uh, CBT, or Cognitive Behavioral uh, Therapy is. Uh, two, just kind of, you know, why I explored uh, that, that uh, route of therapy personally. And, uh, you know, over time, um, you know, can we change some of our thoughts and some of our feelings so that we can look through maybe CBT therapy kind of as a lens or a filter uh, to kind of tackle things? Because, again, anxiety is just an equation, right? Uh, and then kind of leads us to things like avoidance, right? Not getting things done or... Um, or, you know, anxiety and depression just make uh, that worse. Um, emotions and, and when the best time to kind of utilize or uh, recognize your, your emotions because when things are too dialed up, uh, like I talked before, kind of like that fire dragon scenario, um, or maybe it's too low because you're, you know, you, you really don't have a mood to do anything. Um, you can kind of work through um, some of your emotions there. But uh, I, I wanted to kind of share, uh, showcase those uh, four ideas there and really how it's impacted me. So let's just go back, uh, not too far, but just far enough to see uh, when I go into my doctor and I've been complaining for a long time that uh, my, I have really poor sleep habits uh, or I just have worse sleeping patterns. I've developed some pain in, in, in my jaw uh, called TMJ. And it's a condition that actually got really bad, so bad that I started developing migraines. And I'm a person who never got uh, headaches before, even you know working long hours or you know uh, studying or whatnot. I just never got headaches that uh, some people experience. So I was blessed with that. So when having TMJ and just having something from my nerve going all the way up to my my uh, temple, my head, and, and attacking my whole nervous system. I was even um, uh, getting hypertension in the shoulder there, which I, I couldn't control. And they literally had to relax my shoulders for a little while with uh, some um, acupuncture. And then so that the massage therapist would try to get in and pack some of the muscles, but then I'd have to get uh, even deeper, what's called TPI, trigger point injection, where they actually inject into the uh, muscle there to relax it even more because my shoulders were like literally so wound up and I was sleeping that I, I just couldn't relax. So I'm sure some of you guys feel that. If you ever do, uh, just talk to your doctor about it and ask them. Because uh, the doctors are generally general doctors and, uh, you know, that's your family doctor, right, that goes there. And no disrespect to them, but, uh, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with some uh, mental health issues, um, you don't know what to unpack. You don't know and they can only ask you questions uh, based on kind of the, the forms or the standards that the, the country or the medical um, governing bodies uh, put forth right so if you're dealing with anxiety or something like that they'll give you a standardized form ask you uh, how often are you feeling this and you know uh, how often are you doing things or what's the mood and you know sometimes you just can't get out of that funk so uh, what I ended up doing is I started talking to them and I said I, I, I've heard there's a free program out there called cognitive behavioral therapy uh, given out by the uh, the 
actually BC right now um, in Victoria and they're like yep um, uh, we'll give you a referral to it so they basically contacted uh, someone in the ministry I got a referral tag back and um, I just diligently because I was so desperate for help and I didn't have it from my insurance company um, they they were working quite slowly lost all my files I was nine months uh, basically without pay at that point and just desperate and I, but I, I knew that my quality of life had to get back to normal for me to even achieve anything but at the end of the day too is I, I everything just went downwards right the depression was so strong that uh, everything my, my my habits or my reactions and everything was just super poor like uh, I, I probably was so wound up at that point and I have video of that that I'll share down the road uh, that really impacted me right that showed you know I, I can how I can get from kind of being normal to a red zone uh, in such a short period of time so anyways I fast forward and uh, I started taking a, a generalized program on what is cognitive behavioral therapy uh, and it was great because uh, it, it was just kind of telling me that you know um, I just notice when my emotions are heightened and basically how my body reacts to that, those were normal. Like those were normal reactions. And uh, you know, I, I used to get quite a short fuse, but my body would react too and I'd clench up or I would get, uh, you know, sweaty, right? For no reason at all, like I'm so worked up. And if you're getting those thoughts or emotions or feelings, uh, generally the behaviors that come after that are going to be poor and unfortunately you know that's kind of uh, either society's done it time frames done it or maybe even how we kind of grew up uh, uh, within uh, you know uh, grew up um, during our childhood right or any traumas that could have shaped the way uh, that those are your reactions too but we've all heard the term luminosity and basically uh, that's just changing the way your brain reacts to something. So if I give you an example of, let's say you're driving the car. There's obviously a lot of anxieties that happen with a lot, uh, different people on different experience levels. So just imagine you're a new driver, right? Everyone's gone through that process before. You're white knuckling it or you're just holding uh, um, the steering wheel tight you're you're super nervous you're super panicked about uh, everything and unfortunately a person or a dog or something runs out in front of you you break you panic you scream and your first reaction is maybe ah right get your your hands off uh the the, the steering wheel and i've seen that so many times and i just tell people like that's changeable Right? Don't freak out at the stop sign. Don't freak out at the, the stoplight. Don't freak out because someone uh, hold on to the thing, just normal pace and, and uh, firmly press the brake right? and modulate it. Make sure that you're, you're paying attention so that you can get out of the way, steer. Because if you panic and then you let your brain shut down, that's your reaction. And can you imagine that you, know, you do that year after year, uh, month, like, you know, just for decades, you're gonna just practice that type of experience and, and that, that wouldn't be uh, good to showcase at all. Uh, but you know, now when we, I look at the scenario is if I can change that, that means my brain does have the ability to kind of unpack and go through. And what I learned through this kind of depression is you have to be in a good state of mind or be able to capture yourself and, and just kind of be, good self-awareness of how you're feeling today or how you're feeling in that moment and be able to kind of dial that down and say, okay, I can attack that. Or, hey, let's back off a little bit and uh, let's repack this and let's just see if this is an emotion or is this a fact. And cognitive behavioral therapy, because I did that diligently for one year on my own without any support, I have to say was probably one of the biggest benefits ever. And uh, I won't share uh, much more about my insurance at this point, but uh, what was even more debilitating is uh, when I was getting kind of these frantic nightmares 
and uh, you know I'd be swinging away and uh, unfortunately I put my daughter to bed one day and my wife's there and I'm, I'm waking up in the morning like kind of swinging away and you know uh, I'm not a small person so you know one hits uh, my wife and my daughter in one shot and they're like they got it startled and like what the heck's going on you had a nightmare and that's when I had to go to my doctor and explain that I had nightmares and I wasn't feeling good and that mentally I just thought and unfortunately they don't have resources so they said if you want to get a psychologist it's going to take you one year one year uh, unless you want to check yourself into the emergency ward and uh, ask to take a psych evaluation and if they do accept you that you can get put on a waiting list and I just thought in my depressionary state already that uh, I really had no kind of hope at that point so as I'm doing my cognitive behavioral therapy, that's actually the whole experience that I'm sharing week after week is that I, I'm getting so much anxiety of just parking. I actually drove to the emergency, parked myself in the parking lot, and I sat there for two hours. And I sat there because my anxiety was so high that, you know, I just didn't know uh, how to support myself through that whole experience. And I tell my doctor and they say, I'm so sorry. I, I can't do anything more, you know, this is just basically the system. And uh, I, I didn't have a fight at that uh, point, but I had cognitive behavioral therapy where it was a group uh, session. And I had probably some, you know, experience there. I had some good, good uh, uh, people kind of separate what my emotion, my facts were. And, uh, you know, by the grace of good, I, I, I definitely went back to a doctor because my regular doctor uh, was retiring. Um, and I won't make any excuses why uh, I, I've had poor, poor um, experiences with them in the last year. But uh, I had a, 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 a person who came in, like not an intern, but uh, someone who, who kind of needed to support um, because they were short staffed. And this person was a rock star. I got to see them twice. It was the first time uh, I had gone out, uh, really, not after the pandemic, but because uh, I had such been such in a depressionary state that um, I really hadn't gone out and seen people. And uh, to see this person uh, with a smiling face said, you know what, uh, we won't allow to have this type of experience. I'm so sorry that you've gone through this before. Um, let me see, I, I have a, a teacher that I, I've worked with before um, named Dr. Weeb, and um, I'm just gonna talk to him about your scenario because uh, you know it seems like you've gone through a lot and uh, they were very empathetic. Uh, and uh, that was probably the first time that I, I had some hope in a while. And uh, I appreciate it because what happened is I got a referral with uh, Dr. Weave and I still see him today. And that was probably the first breakout session that I, I've had. So, and that was my first experiences with cognitive uh, behavioral therapy that really things can change, right? Uh, just like you can change your habits in your car, you can be more mindful, you can have a better experience, you can reduce your anxiety while driving. You can do that in life too and, and a lot of things and that's clearly what my, uh, my, my next lease on life is going to be. I'm going to share my experiences on how I felt and you know, uh, I'm going to share the goodness of uh, what's happening, not just kind of the, the poor experiences but how we can kind of turn some of our, um, our experiences, our thoughts, feelings and behaviors and really mold them to be uh, more positive because our reactions can probably help uh, our feelings and kind of uh, help us look and filter out the good facts uh, nine times out of ten. And uh, this is a good feeling to have, uh, to sometimes surrender and be mindful of the situation and, and not always be right because uh, it's not about being right in life, it's, it's, it's about uh, uh, taking care of yourself, right? There's no other uh, reasons why except if it goes against your values and I don't see anyone's values about taking care of themselves um, as a kind of a detriment. So um, yeah, uh, I don't wanna, kind of mumble more on today. I just really wanted to kind of share uh, one kind of skill um, 
uh, from cognitive behavior that was super basic and, and it was literally just kind of a grounding skill. And this is kind of how I'll end uh, today's uh, longer video um, of how I got introduced to cognitive behavioral therapy, um, some of my uh, kind of obstacles and how I turned those obstacles uh, and hopefully some positive directions because I'm sitting here today uh, recording a YouTube video and being very comfortable that hopefully I'll inspire just one person. I just need one person to subscribe, one person to watch my video, per, uh, one person to share, right? One person just to be open to have a conversation. The stigma of men uh, not talking about their mental health and, and all the wealth that's uh, associated with it is a travesty. And uh, I only know this because as more as I explore and I unpack some of the traumas that I've had or some of the understandings that how I reacted, uh, good or bad, before, and I, I, I kind of leverage those uh, areas, it's going to be a decent ride, right? And it's going to be better than it was uh, probably six months ago, one year ago, or even two years ago. So Uncle Lo does ask for, for uh, subscribers. This is the only way that I can also get motivated to continue my journey uh, on uh, trying to gain mental wealth and share it with others. Uh, my, my journey at Uncle Lo, uh, under, sorry, at Uncle Lo underscore Low, uh, at Uncle underscore Low. See, I don't even know my own uh, YouTube channel. It's so difficult uh, to, to explain sometimes. It's because, um, I can't believe I'm on YouTube explaining to the world um, how I've unpacked uh, a little bit and seen a little bit of uh, the hope and the, the, the shining rays and the rainbows and butterflies that everyone kind of talks about, uh, but no one really can experience. Uh, once you start unpacking your mind, uh, your heart and your body follow through. Uh, and that's where I kind of end with the grounding exercises. I want everyone just kind of close their eyes for just maybe 20 to 30 seconds, right? And just really feel that, you know, in your spot now is plant your feet into something firm. Touch that ground. Make sure your toes are making some imprints wherever you are. Even if you're on a hard service, know that your toes themselves are making imprints the other way. Move your hips. So that you can feel them rotating, not stagnant, not sitting in just one spot all day, working, feeling tired. See where those hips would move. Then incorporate your mid back, the same spot that you neglect all day, probably slouching, turning, straining misaligning. Straighten it up a little bit and continue moving. Doesn't matter where you are. Keep your eyes closed. We've got a little bit ways to go. Move your shoulders at the same time. Feeling just the two shoulders rotating while the rest of your body just continues getting loose and does what it does. And lastly your neck. Feel the tension moving away while your whole body is moving, engaging. As we count down 10, 9, 8, 7, slow down, moving, 6, 5, breathe in, your nose, breathe out, 4. And uh, may happiness go to you today and I hope that you reduce your anxiety and hope this grounding techniques really gives you a little pause for the day. I appreciate uh, you spending the time almost 20 minutes to listen. I know many people's attention spans are not that long. Hopefully we can just spare this, uh, share this kind of valuable time together so we can do uh, more grounding exercise together just from an average low like Uncle Low. 
uh, and please subscribe and like at Uncle Low und at Uncle underscore Low. So uh, again, take care, uh, YouTubers, and please like and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye bye.